In today's scripture, we hear the story about a paralyzed man whose friends believed that Jesus could heal him and how their faith compelled Jesus to respond. I'm reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2. After a few days, Jesus went back to Capernaum, and people heard that he was at home. So many gathered that there was no longer space, not even near the door. Jesus was speaking the word to them. Some people arrived, and four of them were bringing to him a man who was paralyzed. They couldn't carry him through the crowd, so they tore off part of the roof above where Jesus was. When they had made an opening, they lowered the mat on which the paralyzed man was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Child, your sins are forgiven. Some legal experts were sitting there, muttering among themselves, Why does he speak this way? He's insulting God. The only one God, only the one God can forgive sins. Jesus immediately recognized what they were discussing, and he said to them, Why do you fill your minds with these questions? Which is easier? To say to a paralyzed person, your sins are forgiven, or to say, take up your bed and walk. <clears throat> but so you will know that the human one has authority on the earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who is paralyzed, get up, take your mat, and go home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, today we begin a new series at the movies. This is actually a series that we've done for many summers now, where we look at popular movies that carry a gospel message. We think it's a good reminder that if we are paying attention, we can see God in ordinary, everyday life. You know, sometimes I think we are looking for God to move in big, miraculous ways that we can miss the little stuff. And so today we're going to start with a 2019 independent film called The Peanut Butter Falcon. <laughs> well, this is a story of three unlikely friends, and that's our first character. His name is Zach. He's a 22-year-old man with Down syndrome, but a man with a dream. You see, Zach, for years, had been obsessively watching these old VHS tapes of his hero, a professional wrestler named Saltwater Redneck. And Zach become, dreams of becoming a professional wrestler and going to Saltwater's School of Wrestling. But Zach is stuck living in this assisted living facility as a warden of the state because his family can't care for him. Well, now we meet the second of our three characters, this young, widowed, compassionate social worker named Eleanor. Well, Zach doesn't try. Matter of fact, later that night, he escapes by stripping down to his tidy whities and rubbing uh, baby oil all over his body, and his roommate, Carl, helps him escape through the bars of their window. And Zach is off and running towards freedom wearing only his underwear. And he arrives at this boat ramp and he hides in the hull of a boat that belongs to this small outlaw, small time outlaw named Tyler. Now, Tyler 
is carrying a lot of pain around in his life. He's our third character. And his older brother, Mark, has died in an accident in which Tyler fell asleep at the wheel. And since then, this wayward fisherman has fallen on hard times. And he is running from his grief and from his guilt and from some rival fishermen after he set all of their fishing gear on fire. So the last person you might expect to be Zach's buddy is this guy named Tyler. Well, Zach and Tyler develop this beautiful friendship. Tyler finds this unconditional acceptance in Zach, and Zach finds someone who believes in him and embraces his dream. And so they are off on this journey, and Tyler has to wrestle with the question, how far will I go to help a friend? Well, he agrees to get Zach to his destination, which is Saltwater Redneck School of Wrestling. And to make better time, Tyler decides they're going to borrow a boat. And in the process of borrowing this boat, the owner is a guy named Jasper. He's this blind guy who loves Jesus, but he is not afraid to protect his property. And so when he finds them borrowing his boat, he's waving his pistol in the air, and he says, are you God-fearing? Well, to make a long story short, Zach ends up getting baptized in the swamp by Jasper. And then Jasper says, you can choose anything you want from my junkyard to make a raft for your journey. And away they go. That's such a sweet, tender scene. Zach is so grateful for Tyler's friendship that he says, Tyler, I'm going to give you all my wishes for my birthday. And Tyler's feelings for Zach are reminding him of this special bond that he had with his brother. Well, Eleanor eventually catches up to Zach and Tyler, and she insists on bringing Zach back to the assisted living facility. But Tyler and Zach are having nothing to do with that. And instead, Tyler invites Eleanor to come with them on this journey and help Zach realize his dream. Well, Eleanor insists that she is taking Zach back. And so in an effort to keep her from doing that, Zach grabs her car keys and, well, watch what he does. Don't you love Zach's little victory dance? And now Eleanor's faced with this same question. She's joining him on the journey, and she has to ask herself, how far will I go to help a friend? Well, I first saw this movie on a flight to San Diego, and I remember at the time thinking that this movie reminds me of a story that is found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. When this event happened, it must have been so compelling, so life-changing, because every single one of these gospel writers tells this story with almost exactly the same details. This is the story of the paralytic man, a man, perhaps like Zach, who had been discounted and devalued for most of his life because of his condition, but a man with a dream just like the rest of us, and his dream was that he could be healed and walk. Well, right before this second chapter of Mark, we read that Jesus had been out and about. He was traveling from region to region and temple to temple, and he was teaching and preaching and healing. And the word on the street was that this hometown boy was coming home. He was coming back to the city of Capernaum, and this enormous mob gathered. Everybody was there. Everybody. Everybody except the paralytic and this was the chance he'd been waiting for his whole life. This holy man, this healer, was coming to town. But how was he going to get to him? He couldn't do it on his own. He was paralyzed. Now, just a sidebar here for just a second. The Bible doesn't tell us what was causing his paralysis. It might have been a physical ailment. It might have been something that happened at birth. Maybe he was paralyzed by fear or guilt. Maybe he was paralyzed by loneliness. We don't know. All that we know is that he couldn't walk. And so for his dream to be realized, he was going to need the help of some friends, some friends who valued him and believed in his dream. Well, let's review our scripture for just a second here. Mark 2. After a few days, Jesus went back to Capernaum, and people heard that he was at home. So many gathered there that they... There was no longer space, not even near the door. 
Jesus was speaking the word to them. Some people arrived, and four of them were bringing to him a man who was paralyzed. They couldn't carry him through the crowd, so they tore off part of the roof above where Jesus was. When they had made an opening, they lowered the mat on which the paralyzed man was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic child, Your sins are forgiven. All right, we need to pause here for just a second. We can't just read that and pretend like that's normal stuff, right? I mean, who does that? Who tears a hole in somebody else's roof? Well, these four friends, seeing the crowd that was before them, knew that there was no way they were going to get their friend through this crowd. So they came up with this crazy idea that they'd climb up on the roof and they would tear a hole in the roof and lower their friend down to Jesus. Now, I just smile when I picture Jesus inside this house teaching. Just imagine this. And all of a sudden, there's like little dust particles in the air and then clumps of dirt and dried straw and grass start falling all around. And then the next thing you know, there's a man on a stretcher right in front of him. These four friends, these stretcher bearers, were willing to do anything, including wreck the roof, to get their friend to Jesus. And what did Jesus think about that? Well, Mark tells us. He says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, child, your sins are forgiven. All right, we'll stop there for just another second. My sins are forgiven? Ah, thanks. Uh, That's not actually why I'm here. I was hoping you'd healed me. I'd, I'd like to walk again. I really want to walk again. That's what he really wanted. It's what his friends wanted for him. But it's not what he needed. What he needed were for his sins to be forgiven. This is the amazing thing about Jesus, is that he knows what we need. And that's exactly what he wants to give us. He wants to give us a relationship with him. He wants to forgive us from our sins. And he wants us to live in this community of other people, to love and support one another. And then did you notice this? It goes on. When Jesus saw their faith, Their faith, not the faith of this one man, but his faith and his four friends' faith combined. When Jesus saw their faith, he healed this man. And then he said to the man, get up, take your mat, and go home. And he did. And that's the amazing thing, that this story starts with these four friends asking themselves, how far will I go to help a friend? All right, let's go back to the movie for a second here. Well, the day finally arrives, and Zach is going to meet his hero, Saltwater Redneck. But much to his dismay, he learns that his wrestling school closed over 10 years ago. But Saltwater is a good guy, and he agrees to coach Zach, and so he starts off by saying, all right, Zach, what do you want to learn? And Zach says, I want to know the atomic throw. Well, the atomic throw was Saltwater's signature move back in the day. But he confesses to Zach, No one's actually ever done that. It's actually an impossible move. It's just done with cameras. Well, he continues to coach Zach, and a few hours into it, Zach decides that he is ready to wrestle in the ring. And so Saltwater recruits one of his crusty old has-been wrestler friends to wrestle Zach. He did it! He did the atomic throw! (laughs) And I love that the meanest, nastiest thing that Zach could think to say in the heat of the moment is, you are not invited to my birthday party. (laughs) Now, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know how the movie ends, cover your ears. Because Tyler and Eleanor and Zach head off towards Florida together to start a new future. So here's what I found fascinating about both of these stories. Mark tells us that this guy's friends brought him to Jesus to get what he wanted. But in the course of that, he got what he needed. And Zach wanted to be a professional wrestler. But in the process of realizing his dream, he also got what he really needed, which was a family. You know, 2020 was a challenging year for everybody with COVID-19. And I know some of those challenges still continue today for many Well, in 2020, my husband Jerry and I had some challenges thrown our way that had nothing to do with COVID-19. In June, 
Actually, on his 59th birthday, my husband Jerry was di diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Now, this came as a total shock to us, because he was, a, by all accounts, a strong, healthy, active 59-year-old guy with no history of Parkinson's in his family. And then in August, and I've shared this story before, our daughter and her husband and our five- and three-year-old grandsons were in a bad car accident, and they were T-boned by another car going 60 miles an hour. Now, they're okay. I want to share that with you before I move on. And then in September, I was diagnosed with not one, but two hernias. I've never had a hernia in my life, and here I had two, and they required surgery to repair them. And then in November, we lost our 10-year-old golden retriever to cancer. We felt like we just kept getting punched in the gut, and honestly, some days it was just hard to get up. We needed some stretcher bearers in our life. And so our friends and our family and many of you, Messiah Church, you showed up. And you wrote us notes of encouragement, and you sent us beautiful flower arrangements. You called us just to check in. You um, brought us dinner. You offered us words of advice on your own personal journeys with Parkinson's. And you prayed for us. You carried us when we could not carry ourselves. And we are so grateful. And that's what the family of God looks like. So do you have friends like this? Do you have friends who will do anything to help you achieve your dream? friends who will pray for you, friends who will show up and help you even before you ask, sometimes before you even know it yourself? Do you have friends who will wreck the roof for you to get you to Jesus? You know, this is one of the many reasons that we, we really encourage people to be part of a faith group here at Messiah Church. You know, we often say, you don't know you need a faith group until you need a faith group. It's so vital that we have those friends in our lives that will carry us when we cannot carry ourselves and who will continually point us towards Jesus. Well, I think maybe the most important question for today is, are you that kind of a friend? You know, in the midst of these really hard times with COVID and climate concerns and acts of violence that we see every day in this world, are you that kind of friend? Are there people in your life when asked, who is someone who continually points you towards Jesus? Mention your name. Are you willing to wreck the roof, to do whatever it takes to point your friends towards Jesus and share that love of Jesus? How far will you go to help your friend? Let's pray. Jesus, we are so grateful for your love and for your grace, and for your invitation to be part of your family. We are thankful that you know what we need and desire to give us just that. So use us, the people of Messiah Church, that we may be the kind of friends that will do whatever it takes, including wrecking the roof, to point others towards you, our hope and our joy. Amen.